Hi, welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener, and we're here at the Botanic Gardens. This time I got to come inside. I don't think we were able to come inside the last time we had a tour, which was last season, surprisingly enough. And I'm here right now with all of the different plants. There are three floors so far that we've been up, and there's all kinds of plants here. They have olive trees and jade trees and Christmas cactuses, hibiscus. hibiscus, fig trees, orange trees of all different varieties, banana palms with bananas on them, and I'll show you how tall these banana trees are. We're on the third floor, and that is how far down they are. So that is the banana palms. We've got the Thai black banana. Got some coconut palm trees in here. There's a koi pond down there. And you can see some of the bananas hanging over the edge. And all sorts of just beautiful, lovely plants in here. And we're going to be taking a trip out to the community gardens here in just a moment. I don't know if suburban homesteader Wyoming slash Arizona Sandy has ever been out here to the Cheyenne Botanic Gardens but they are beautiful very manicured lots of different plants and I'm enjoying looking at ones that even I have that will turn out to look something like these eventually and I would love to have banana palm trees and you can actually have dwarf banana trees in your house which I'm looking for right now so once I get my hands on those it's very humid in here so it's going to be stilling my breath the whole time but I'll show you the koi pond here in a moment and they've expanded with having a little cactus area but this is the Cheyenne Botanic Gardens if you ever get a chance to come out here to Cheyenne Wyoming and definitely check these out and here's a different angle up above. And again, this is the Cheyenne Botanic Gardens. All sorts of lovely plants. We just came from this area through here up the stairs. And there's some lovely Christmas cactuses over there. And I eventually want to have a jade tree just like this. My grandmother used to have a jade tree that was about half this size, but still was quite big. And that's my grandson, Bill. We're on the second level now. Bill. It's like looking through the canopy of a forest indoors. And now we're on the bottom level, and that's the same Thai black banana that we saw from the third floor. There's some really huge banana trees in here. Bill? Bill, back here now. Sorry about that. We had to get my grandson back in order. He keeps just taking off and trying to run off. And there are the bananas. Both of the two of the banana trees are producing right now. And my grandson's pretty excited. He actually wanted to try to climb a tree.
fail. And here we are at the little bridge with the koi pond or stream. And here are some of the koi that are swimming around. And can anyone spot the turtle? It's really pretty. And there's a really large pleco in here. I'm not sure if I can find him again. And that is the biggest koi, I think. They have some really nice water features in here. Really beautiful area. Little air plants stuck on the walls. And then they have some in some branches as well. Check that out. And it's kind of cool because you can walk through the fronds of the trees. And I'm not sure if this is a lemon or an orange or even a lime. It looks kind of like an orange. You see, you can walk through under the leaves of the plants. And in here is all of the cactuses and some succulents. And some are hanging. Who's up there? It's probably rain or hail. Some little succulents stuck into the log. Samantha, is that the one that you have, the golden barrel cactus? You mean my boob cactus? Yes. She calls it a boob cactus. Well, mine looks like a boob right now, but yes, that's it. <laughs> Pretty sure you've shown people what my boob cactus looks like. They will agree. I don't think I've ever actually shown it on camera. You've not shown any of my cacti? My cacti. Some of them, but not that one. I think we didn't. We got that one later. She's been on the search for a paracactus, and we finally found one. And it actually has a lot of babies on it. It is a very nice piece of driftwood. I like how they got the air plants stuck in the uh, palm. If you can look at the trunk. Well, and now we're headed out to the children's village. Unfortunately, it did start to rain, but. Fortunately, it's for the garden. And we have an umbrella. Because Samantha remembered it. I leave it in the vehicle at all times. back a little bit please all kinds of beautiful plants in here nope it's open Where is it?
just a little slippery just because of the rain. Uh -huh. But good. you're good. Okay, let's slow down. Bill. Beautiful little area right here in the children's village. And they have classrooms and all kinds of things back here. And there is our columbines. Oh, this one has a little bit of peach on it, Samantha. Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't have the peach, it just has the yellow. I got stuck with the umbrella because the kid is going to go and play in the inside. Beautiful flowers. And of course I have some of these flowers, especially the coleus. And I did plant some forget-me-nots and I think they're just now beginning to come up. And, or maybe they're snapdragons. I don't really know what, remember what they're called. But I also have Celosia. I just kind of scattered them around all through my garden. You can see all the things that you can do at the base of a tree. They're even liking it here. There's all sorts of little hidden areas here as well. Looks like we got some stuffed animals in the little Puppet area, puppet theater. And this is a secret garden. So you just walk through the hole and it comes into the secret garden. And that's where the backside of the puppet theater is. And all kinds of little cute features in here. And the door is even painted. And more coleus. And we've made it back out to the main area. It's raining and thundering, but if it starts to lightning, then I'll have to go inside. Kind of a topiary. I think the zinnias that they had in here were a lot bigger last season. This area was completely just covered. So we had a little bit of a rainstorm with a little bit of lightning so we're just going to kind of cut this part short of being out in the children's village. But it is very pretty. Make sure that you come out to visit the Cheyenne Botanic Gardens in Cheyenne, Wyoming. When do they do the story circle, Samantha? I don't know. Well. So there is the Botanic Gardens up entrance. With all the pretty flowers.
We should have planted some. Some echinacea. Coneflower. And something you wanted to get growing this season and it didn't come up. This is pretty. Nice little area to sit. Under a tree. And we are now headed to the community gardens. We'll see you there. Beautiful little irises along the way. And some more cute little guys over here. We're still continuing on the way in a beautiful little pond out here. For some reason in Cheyenne, they call these lakes and they're ponds <laughs> in Tennessee a lake is a much bigger body of water than these guys so to us that is a pond <laughs> so still in all in all it's a little it's a pretty little body of water and there is a nice koi out there but it's difficult to see them because the water's kind of murky right now because it just rained. Beautiful little area to walk through to get to the community gardens. And this goes around the pond. And I just found the water source for the pond that I walked by. And they have a pretty picnic area prior to getting to where the community gardens are. All underneath these very large cottonwoods, which is the typical tree that you come across for the community gardens, or in Cheyenne and Wyoming in general. Pretty much that's what I've seen is cottonwoods. Every once in a while you'll come across a maple or something like that that someone has planted. <laughs> Mr. Bill? Mm -mm. Grandson keeps trying to bounce in front, in front of us and we try to keep him in between. We won't stay very long out here because it still looks like that it might rain. It's been raining for a little bit. But here we are at the North Community Garden. And I'm not sure if they have other gardens or if this is the only one because I haven't been all the way through the grounds. But you can see they are separated into plots and it looks like right now that it is locked. And every time I've been out here that it has been locked. So very difficult to get in there. And it looks like I don't feel so bad now because it seemed like my garden was behind, but it looks like a lot of these gardens are also behind. And it's because our soil temperatures have been so cool. And it looks like that their red cabbage is a little bit ahead of mine. So they probably had theirs, theirs planted a little bit longer than mine was. But some of their other cabbages are behind mine. Um, not very many potatoes in here. Looks like they're doing kind of a modified roost out with some straw. And we've got some bottles over here. Looks like five gallon water bottles. I'm gonna see what that's about. Oh, there's some beets with some straw. I do not put straw around my beets. I think it's a little bit restrictive on the growth. But it looks like we got some pak choy in here. Right there is the pak choy. Some different lettuces. Um, the plot for community garden to me is pretty small. That's one of the reasons why I haven't done it so far. It just seems like it's such a small area for the expense. Um, I think it's somewhere around $120 to have a community garden plot, which is pretty small. 
but I do notice a lot of people will get three and four sometimes of the plots and they'll have a much larger garden but it's a lot of expense to put into gardening A lot of nice little plots out here with some stuff. And I noticed this one last season had a lot larger vegetables and the same thing this season. Their Swiss chard over there is enormous and they do have an artichoke. So maybe someone took a tip from me that you can grow artichoke here. That one's a way ahead of mine because mine's shaded. Yes, this one is like the size of probably three, four plots together. No, it's two plots together. So you can see their cabbage is pretty big. I'm not real sure what kind that is. It kind of looks like an early Jersey Wakefield, which is a lot larger cabbage. And looks like their broccoli is actually already going to um, bloom. And I see a couple of blooms on it. So looks like they may have harvested the center heads and just need to come out and uh, get their little sprouts off the sides. It is three. Yeah. Another artichoke here. Some onions. Those are spaced much further apart because they have more space in here right now, but they don't have a whole lot of different crops because really um, there's not a whole lot of space even with three plots together. I've got some carrots and theirs are about the same as mine. That the soil temperatures this season were about two and a half weeks behind. We were just speaking with the Botanic Gardens Children's Village, um, I guess, manager, and he said that they were soil temperatures were behind. Some more Swiss chard and some more other vegetables in here. Here's one that is very organized. Looks like we got some broccoli or cauliflower, onions, and some different varieties of kale. We've got two plots. Looks like they have two plots. So they've got straw on one side and then bare ground on the other, so they're doing an experiment probably. Some garlic. This is some really good looking garlic through here. And I don't think it's a uh, soft, neck, soft neck variety, or a hard, sorry, hard neck variety because I'm not seeing any scapes really. So that looks like a soft neck variety, probably elephant garlic or some sort of garlic that they picked up at the store and then went ahead and planted in. Here's a plot that doesn't have hardly anything in it. Maybe they just got um, something else going on and didn't end up putting a garden in. And here's another one, or they may have gotten it killed with the freeze that we had pretty early on. Look at that tree. But one of the things about the community garden as well is that the plots all get snapped up and there's not a whole lot of plots and I don't know if they have a south garden or if this is the only one. They should. This plot looks pretty nice. They've got some onions and garlic, cabbages, and celery like I have. Probably the same variety. My variety I found out is a tango celery and it's actually doing really well right now. And I got a little interesting apparatus there. Probably some way to keep moisture. which right now it's pretty muddy out here. And I noticed that it was last time we were here too. So I think this area retains a lot of moisture. Probably has a, quite a bit of, of clay soil. Looks like that was the asparagus bed. Yeah, looks like they didn't harvest any of it. It all went to seed. A really pretty garlic, some really pretty lettuce in there. Looks like they got the Four Seasons lettuce. Nice peas on this plot. 
Um, looks like they've got the just the one plot here. But they have quite a lot of things. They've got their space allocated very well. Looks like they've already harvested some stuff. They've got some bok choy in there or pak choy. Some zucchini, looks like. And their peas are doing really well. And uh, looks like they have some Ford Hook Swiss chard up there. Some tomatoes. I see a bunch of peas on those trellises back there hanging in pods. Looks like those are a shelling variety because they've left them. You can definitely see the peas in the pods. Sunflowers, this looks like a double plot or maybe even... Now this, is a, this has got to be a four plot one. So they have quite a bit of space. This is actually a full sized garden. Mm hmm. Lots of purslane in here. Um, purslane actually has a really pretty flower on it if you let it go to flower. But it does smother out a whole lot of other plants if you leave it in. But you can eat it. And they've got some corn in here. Looks like their corn has already tasseled. Um, so it looks like it might have stunted. Or it may be that it's popcorn varieties. So it's really small. What's the black one? Hmm? They've got a black corn. That's already tasseled. I don't know. It may be popcorn. It kind of looks like that it might be what's called raspberry corn or it's popcorn. Because if you notice, the ears are really close to the ground. So popcorn usually doesn't get very tall. It gets like this. And the ears are pretty small. Yep. So they've got all that space going through here. It looks like maybe behind the shed as well. And here's another plot. Looks like they're growing red onions. And their onions are pretty big. Um, about the size of mine, actually. There's There's some of mine that are about that big. So it looks like everybody's garden is a little bit behind. Looks like that was a volunteer pea that came up or maybe just a sweet pea. Nope. It's got some pods on it so it's a volunteer pea that came up. And looks like this might be catnip or an apple mint. Catnip. So all kinds of little things going on in there as well and Having a lot of problems with purslane. And we got some plants in a bucket. <laughs> Looks like a pepper plant in a bucket here. And that's probably to get a little bit more heat into the roots. And some onions in here. More peas on this plot. And this one looks fairly organized. They have a very small patch of corn, but they did do it correctly if they're going to have a small patch which is just to have it in a little square area and that gets pollination to all of the corn. So this one looks like a triple or quadruple bed as well. And they've got lots of different things in here. Their carrots are ahead of mine. So they've had their carrots in for a while and they put it behind the trellis so that gave it a little bit more protection from any freezing or anything. And they've got some peppers going on. I do have some peppers already set and some tomatoes already set. And I noticed that they did have some as well. And it looks like they had some issues with their radishes as well just going to seed. They just went to bolt. So I noticed that they've pulled quite a few out and they're probably thinning trying to save them. But once they start doing that and blooming, it's too late. You can't do anything about it. They will not head up. So you just better to pull them and then try again. So, lots of stuff in there. Alright, so like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out. And this was the trip to the Cheyenne Botanic Gardens and to see the community garden and how it was doing this season. And we will see you in the next one.